Jeez. Just keep it simple, stupid. Why can't the Social Security Administration tell us in a simple way what our Social Security benefit's going to be? I think they practice the kick method, which is keep it complicated for the knuckleheads. That's okay, though, because this week on the Retirement Answer Man show, we're going to share some calculators to help you more simply determine what your Social Security benefit is going to be. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Retirement Answer Man show. My name is Roger Whitney. If you haven't been here before, this is the show dedicated to helping you not just survive retirement. We really want you to rock retirement. And keeping it simple is a good way to do that. Well, all right, we are entering week two of our series on maximizing Social Security. Last week, we talked about how they calculate benefits and whether Social Security is going to be around. And this week, we're going to dive into, well, one, how do you protect your Social Security number? That's an important thing to do. And then we're going to dive into some calculators to kiss it, baby, to figure out how we can simply calculate what our benefit looks like depending on when we want to have a life of more freedom, all right? But we can't do any of that until we have that all-important disclaimer. Like most things, the internet is a two-edged sword. There's some amazing information out there and education that you can get, but you know what? There's a lot of crap, too. And it's easy to consume a podcast, consume a blog, and think of it as advice that you should go do in your life. Well, don't think of this podcast this way. This is definitely helpful hints in education, but I am not here to give you advice. You know why? It's not because I don't want to help you. It's because I don't know anything about you. The only way I give advice is when I'm working with a client, acting as a fiduciary, so I know enough to be able to really speak into their life. And you and I don't have that relationship, at least right now. So... You got to think of this as helpful hints in education. Before you make any decisions, talk to your legal advisor, your tax advisor, or your financial advisor if you use one, because that's just common sense. All right. Now let's go talk about protecting a pretty important number, your social security number. Identity theft. Holy cow. You know, this is a big issue. I think we're going to be battling forever. It's like an arms war. And protecting your social security number is an important thing you have to do because a lot of people ask for it when they don't really need to know it. I mean, let's talk about identity theft for a second. We had a whole expose or not expose, but a big series on how to protect yourself back when Equifax had that big breach a year or so ago and actually created a worksheet on how to protect your credit information. And you can go get that at rogerwhitney.com in the Learning Center. But in 2017, 14 point 2 million credit card numbers were exposed to the outside world. Nearly 158 million social security numbers were exposed in data breaches in 2017. This is according to Experian.com, one of the major credit companies. 158 million. Now, what's the population of the United States? It's about 326 million people. You know, you cut the kids that Well, I guess kids have social security numbers now right from the top. But almost half of the people have had their social security number exposed just last year. So we're going to talk about some ways of how to protect your social security number and where some of the scams that have been seen out there so you can protect this number because, you know, this is the number that everybody has. So it's important that you protect yours. So to prepare for this, I did a little bit of research and I found a couple of great articles that I'll link to in our Six Shot Saturday email. If you're not signed up for that, just go to rogerwhitney.com and there's a spot there right I think on the homepage where you can enter your email and first name and get six quick tips every Saturday morning on how to rock retirement. So I found two articles, one from the AARP and one from Clark Howard, and I looked at a bunch of others. But let's go through the AARP recommendations on how to guard your social security number. This is important. So the first thing is you never need to really carry it. My wife, whenever I go in for spare change, because she has a purse and she keeps some spare change in there, I'm always like, it's like George Costanza's wallet. It's just this huge thing. And I think she still has 
her Michigan State student ID in that wallet. She keeps everything, right? Well, Social Security card is not something you need to carry around because it can easily get stolen, right? I mean, we leave stuff everywhere. So you don't need to have the card. You never should have to produce the card. So the first recommendation is just leave it at home. The second tip is organizations will ask for it because they use it, I think, as a, well, two things. This is one Clark Howard pointed out. The first one is they use it from identification, but having your social security number in the event that there's a default or they don't pay, it's very much easier to go after you. A medical office, things like that, they don't need to have the social security number, but they always ask for it. And I always get uncomfortable when I get asked for it. I'm never sure why. And and I'll be honest with you. Usually I'm like, okay, here it is just because it's easy. But according to Clark Howard, you don't have to give them your social security information. In fact, in the article that I'm going to link to, he says theft of personal information in doctor's offices, labs, medical centers is up nearly 20%. This was back in 2012. And I have no doubt that it's gone up from there. I really don't because the information is so much out there and there's so many other people trying to get it. So when you go to a medical facility or a doctor, they're going to ask you for the social security number. You don't have to give it to them. They don't need it for anything. Now, it might cause some complications, but just realize that because the more that it's out there, you really only want to give it to people that actually need to have that number. And he made a good point in this article. He said he recently had a diagnostic test, and this article is a few years old, but I think it's still accurate. And they handed him pre-printed forms where his social security number was printed in four places on a couple different forms. I mean, this is just paper flying around. So you can imagine how easy it is for that number to get into somebody else's hands. Really, the only places you're probably going to have to give your social security number is at financial institutions, you know, like a brokerage account, an advisory account, a bank account, where there's money being handled and reporting that has to go back to the IRS and other places. Most of the places that ask, even a lot of government agencies, don't really need it. So be aware on who you're actually giving this to. Now, the next tip in that AARP article is guard the final four. So that's easy to remember if you follow basketball, is the final four are really the most important ones. These are the truly random and unique numbers out of that whole set. So obviously, don't use those in your PIN. If you have to give your social security number for a portion, you can just XXX the final four. X, X, I, one more X on there. Because if you think about it, when it comes to identity theft, there's a lot of things they can get. Your driver's license number, your name, your address. All of those are going to be important to someone who wants to steal your identity. But the social security number, that's like the real one, right? Because if you go to apply for a credit card, that's one of the things that's going to be asked for as well. So you need to protect all of this information. In fact, and I'll tell Nicole, because I don't think she's on right now, to in this week's Six Shot Saturday, we will, rather than you having to go to the Learning Center, I'm going to have her share that Protect Your Credit worksheet that we put together that has action steps to help you protect, obviously, from the credit bureaus and the people that have some of these. So look for that this weekend, okay? And this is all really important because there are a lot of scams out there. So as an example, right now, there's a lot of email scans that come from what appears to be the Social Security Administration or some government entity asking you to go online and complete this information. Really, they're just trying to get your Social Security number or some basic information. So whether it's a phone call, I get these calls from the IRS. I've gotten these lately. Have you gotten these? Where I get these phone calls and they're telling me that I have this huge tax lien and I'm in big trouble and they're from the IRS and I better call and then, you know, agents are going to come to my door any second. I've gotten these calls and my daughter has gotten these calls, man, maybe 10, 15 times over the last two or three months. And of course, with my daughter there once, I called back. They give you a number to call back and I called back and I just basically played the role that I was scared and my number was going to be, you know, what do I do? And asking them what I should do. And they were telling me agents are on their way. They're at the door. I mean, they played it up. Now, the very thick foreign accent was a hint that this might not be real, even though you know it wasn't. But I think we had like a 10-minute conversation, but he kept probing, yes, you're going to have to pay us. Yes, the agents are coming to the door. Let me gather your information and we can fix this for you. All those types of things. Now, for a lot of us, that feels silly if we've gotten those and we understand some of this, but people fall for these things. And so even if it's not you, think of your mother or someone older that is not familiar with the internet and how this stuff works. 
And they may be more apt to, if someone asks and they say they're from a, a government entity of authority, they don't know whether it's an email that looks legit and they click on a link and they fill out all the information or they get a scary call like this. Put yourself in someone's shoes who isn't as astute as you are. So if you are helping be a steward or a caretaker for a mom or dad or granddad or grandmother or someone, you know, it might be good to have a system of checking their credit history or their social security account just to make sure that they hadn't fallen victim to something like this because it can be intimidating if you don't realize how silly it is, right? So be aware that people are hunting for this stuff. All right. So you got to protect this number. Now let's go figure out how do you keep it simple and figure out what the heck your benefit's going to be. So how do we keep this simple in calculating your social security benefit? So what we're going to do today is we're going to just talk about some resources that you can use to get a general estimate, but also get a detailed estimate of what your benefit might be. So we're going to start with paper, the paper social security statement. Okay, it's not really a calculator, but they've done all the calculations for you. And if you executed on the action step last week and went to ssa.gov, registered for your social security account, you could download that annual statement that we used to get in the mail, and I think they send it out again, that gives you what your estimated payment is at full retirement. So I downloaded mine, and I'm looking at it here. So if you have yours, pull it out. If you don't, you can just follow along, and if you download this, you'll understand. So first page is, hey, welcome, and they have YouTube channels and Twitter accounts and Facebook and all that. But anyway, the second page looks at here are your estimated benefits. So when I looked at mine, it says, hey, I've earned enough credits to qualify. So it'll tell you that. And that your current earnings rate, if you continue to work to your full retirement, for me, that is age 67. I'm 51 years old right now. It says your estimated payment would be about, and mine is just shy of $3,000 a month. So that's the one that we generally key in on. Okay, if I work and I retire, I'm going to get that. Here's the thing you need to understand about that. That is assuming that you're earning like you're earning now until full retirement. So if you plan to retire early, which a lot of people do, or if you plan to transition to pre-retirement, something where, hey, you're not earning the big bucks anymore, you're earning a lot less, but you have more time freedom, that number is not going to be that number, right? Because it's assuming that you're working until full retirement age. For me, it would be 67. In this case, they're probably right. And then below that, they have, okay, at age 70, this is what your payment's going to be. It goes up to like $3,700. And at age 62, your payment's going to be about 2000 So that's the range of when you take Social Security. So those numbers still assume that you're working at the average salary up until that date. Now, the next category is, hey, disability. If you earn enough credits to qualify, which I have, and you become disabled, your payment's going to be about, and it's pretty close to your full retirement payment. So disability is a huge benefit that a lot more people are taking, honestly, but it's something that you know you have an option outside of just simply retirement. But we're really focused in on retirement here. Now, survivors, that's the next category outside of family. If you, know, if you die, your spouse and sometimes your kids will be able to earn off of your benefit. So it's going to outline that there for you. So this is an important table to look at, right? But it's not going to give you the full picture if you retire early or if you go into some kind of pre-retirement phase because that can skew that average earnings that the calculation is based off of. Now, I just noticed this and I'm going to have to check this out because it gives me my birth date and it gives me my social security number, but it only shows me the last four. Now, I just told you, you really should protect the last four because those are the ones that are unique to you. And the Social Security Administration is doing the opposite. I don't understand that. So I'm going to have to reconcile that to figure out what to tell you. So I apologize for that because I'm everything I read in my research says, yeah, you protect the last four. But here they're giving you the last four and protecting the other one. So we'll figure that out. Now, if you download your statement, like I just did on a PDF, you know, once I logged into Social Security Administration, I could just have the login and go use that whenever I want to see it. But I downloaded the actual statement. Now it's a PDF on my computer. So that means if my computer got hacked 
If there was a data breach in Dropbox or whatever file share thing that you use, well, there is the PDF of your statement with all of your earnings information, part of your social security number, your birth date, and your address. So if you're going to download this PDF statement and keep it on your computer, my suggestion is, is that you password protect it. So how do you do that? Well, on a Mac, I can tell you how to do it. I don't know how to do it on a Windows computer, but I know it can be done. So on a Mac, what you do is you make a duplicate of it. And then when you hit save, it has some options in a box that says, do you want to encrypt this document? And you say yes, and then you can enter a password. And then now that's going to be password protected at the document level, not just the system level. And then you delete the old one. On a Windows computer, it's going to be something similar. I just don't know how because I'm drinking the juice of Apple. Now, we'll have to do an episode on computer safety. So what do you do with that old document that's not encrypted? Well, it's easy just to delete it or put it into trash. But then you got to empty your trash. And there are some software programs that can empty your trash to where it really clears it off of the back of the hard drive. Now, we're talking higher level stuff here. So we may have to do a whole series on just protecting all your stuff in this digital world. But that's one way you can protect it. But you want to try to encrypt this if you're going to keep it on your computer or in Dropbox or something like that. All right, so now let's get out of paper and talk about some calculators, okay? The first calculators I'm going to suggest that you go to are the ones at the Social Security Administration, ssa.gov. They have a lot of calculators. Here's the ones I want to talk about. They have a basic one, a retirement estimator, which is going to give you an estimate of your Social Security based on your earnings record. And this is basically going to give you what this paper statement gives you, but it's going to give you an estimate. So that's going to be good for what it does. The one that I would suggest that you check out if you think you're going to go into pre-retirement or you're going to retire prior to your full retirement age is their detailed calculator. This is going to give you the most precise estimate of what your retirement benefit is going to be. And I want to thank Lisa. She reminded me of this one in an email as she knew the series was coming up. So thanks for that, Lisa. So we'll put a link to it in Six Shot Saturday. Nicole's going to have fun putting all these links in. With the detailed calculator, as I attempted to play around with it here recently, I haven't used it in a while, you got to download it. So you actually have to download it onto your computer. It's like a spreadsheet that works on your computer, which is cool. I'm comfortable with that, but it definitely brings a layer of complexity for some people. And it did for me because they have a Mac version, but it doesn't work on the most recent operating software. Huh? The Social Security Administration has an annual budget of just over a trillion dollars. I don't even know what a trillion is. It has a budget of over a trillion dollars, and they can't make a calculator to tell us easily what our benefit might be that works on a Mac computer. Boggles the mind. So if you're on a Mac computer, you're going to have to find a workaround, find a friend that has a Windows-based computer so you can download this. But the cool thing about this, and this is what Lisa pointed out, is you can actually enter your earnings history in the spreadsheet, which you get from the paper statement or online. And then if you're going to retire at, say, 58, you can put zeros for 59, 60, 61, all the way up to full retirement. That way, the calculator can calculate more accurately what your true average earnings is going to be, which is what your benefit is ultimately going to be based on. So that's pretty important if you're going to retire early or if you're going to go into pre-retirement and go from earning 250000 to 30000 a year. And from a planning aspect, you can play around with that a little bit to help determine, well, if I work one or two more years at this salary, what's the impact going to be on my Social Security? And that gives you more depth to help make that decision. Because that can be pretty important because it's all going to be based on the average. And if you need those last years prior to full retirement age, and the difference by entering zeros to entering making 200 or whatever it is you make, you'll be able to see the impact on that monthly benefit and the lifetime value of what you might give up. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that, wow, okay, I'm just going to work longer because it does this. It's going to be a value-based decision based on your life, right? It's not all about the numbers, but you want to know the numbers. And I'm going to take a little sidebar here because I think that's an important thing to remember. A lot of financial planning 
and retirement planning is all about maximizing the numbers, not about maximizing your life. And it's easy to get caught into that and make life decisions because we want to, quote unquote, optimize that benefit if we live to full normal age, what the actual number is going to be. It's important to know. I'm not saying that that shouldn't be part of the equation, but it may be more important to you to get out of the rat race earlier. I had a client once, I mean, in, when he was retiring, it was a conscious decision. I think it was like seven more months he could have worked and he would have got some executive benefit that would have gave him in excess of a million dollars. So the equation is, hey, you work seven more months and you get a million bucks. Let's just say, it, keep it simple like that. Through lots of discussions, the choice was, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm done now. Left a million bucks on the table for seven months. Think about that. I don't care how wealthy you are. That's a hard thing to do. But from the totality of his life, what he had already, what he cared about and where he was in a phase of life, it was an easy decision. So just we want to try to maximize the numbers, but you got to balance that. It's, sometimes it's just too easy, especially for analytical people to always go to the numbers and forget about everything else. Okay. But this detailed calculator on Social Security Administration website is great. And then they have other calculators like a windfall elimination provision, which is something that we're not going to get into today. Life expectancy calculator or a spousal calculator, early or late retirement calculator, earnings test calculator, all these calculators are really good. So kudos to the Social Security Administration for spending part of the trillion dollar budget, at least creating this website. And I just wish you would make the detailed calculator <laughs> work on a Mac, but kudos because this is a great first place to go. And guess what? It's free. Now, there are other free calculators out there. There is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has a calculator that may be a little easier for you because you still got to navigate to the free ones on the Social Security Administration. That's a decent calculator. It's not going to be that detailed. AARP has a calculator. They have a lot of calculators, but their Social Security calculator is decent but it's not going to be that robust. It's basically going to give you the estimate and it's going to make you do a lot more of the work of just giving, you know, it's not going to be that accurate. But there are a lot of free calculators out there. I don't know why you would need to use them relative to the Social Security Administration one because they're the ones with the numbers, but some are easier to use and they work on everything. So you can go there, but I haven't found one outside of the detailed one in Social Security Administration that's free that will help you game pre-retirement or retiring early, but we'll have some links to these in Six Shot Saturday. Man, we're going to have a lot of links in Six Shot Saturday. Nicole's got her work cut out for her. So lastly, I want to spend a time on some more sophisticated calculators that aren't necessarily free that will help you if you're married, look at some of the available strategies to figure out how you and your spouse maximize your social security benefits as a family. So that's where you're getting some complicated. We're going to go through some of the strategies available in week four of this series. So that's in a couple of weeks. But I want to at least address that we have these calculators out there right now. So you have one is called MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. And for $40, you can, on an annual basis, you can cover all your benefits, run lots of different reports. And then they have more sophisticated calculators that you can pay it for. But these are where you're going to be able to model, okay, do I file and suspend? Do I do all the strategies from a spouse to another? And these are going to cost a little bit of money, whether it's 40, 50, even a hundred something dollars, but it could literally be the difference in thousands, tens of thousands of dollars if you have a strategy that can be that much more efficient based on you and your spouse's earnings history and your plan for retirement. So one is MaximizeYourSocialSecurity.com. I have no affiliation with them. I've played around with it, but I have not used it in my practice. The other paid one, and this is one I have more experience with, is SSAnalyzer.com. And it can cost anywhere from $300 to $1,000 annually that more is geared to professionals, but can calculate a lot of the different strategies in a more robust way and game using some Monte Carlo and things like that. So SSA Analyzer is another one. In a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about how you decide when you take Social Security. We'll do it for single people and we'll do it for married people. And all of these calculators are generally based off of 
the lifetime value, the lifetime benefit if you live to a normal age. So it's looking at what the lifetime benefit will be with each strategy. And it's going to look at where the break-even point is in terms of if I take it early, when do I actually start earning more than if I would have waited? So that's usually because so it's a really obviously it's a calculator, it's very numbers based, which is important, but it doesn't really show you what is best for you from a cash flow perspective given your life. Like the tool that I've always used, and if you've watched any of the webinars where we're looking at what are our confidence of success of achieving this life, I like to look at the numbers end of it, but I like to look at which one helps us from a confidence level of hitting the cash flow plan that we developed. And sometimes that's not the one that jives with the pure math approach. So I think you want to make sure you look at both of those. But we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. But these are some calculators that you can use to better estimate your benefits and hopefully keep it simple. Now let's go get happy. Hey, welcome to the Happy Lab, where we noodle on what, Nicole? How to get happy. Oh, Lord. Yes. The happier life. <laughs> How to get a happier life. That's good, too. So I'll tell you, I've started this book called The 12-Week Month, and I may have talked about it before. And one of the goals I set was to start focusing a little bit on my hobbies a little bit more. And there's a lot of science behind this because hobbies make us happier. I mean, it's almost scientifically proven. I don't know if that's a, that's not a very scientific statement, is it? Almost scientifically proven. <laughs> it sounds a little sketchy, yeah. Okay, it is. I will be bold. It's scientifically proven that hobbies can make you happy. One of the reasons I think, Nicole, is that as a human, and I've been listening to this clinical psychologist and reading a lot of his stuff lately, and he says... Oh, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm analyzing you. He says that... Happiness comes from taking on responsibility. Now, that can be like, oh, Lord, I don't want responsibility. But a hobby sort of is responsibility, right? If you're building a boat, now you're responsible for the entire project you know, of the plans and acquiring. But it's more in a personal, passionate way than it is like a work responsibility. But I think I agree right. with that. We were built for some kind of purpose. So my hobby, you have a guess what my hobby is, Nicole? I'm racking my brain trying to decide between them. I'm going to go with cycling on this one. Cycling is one of my hobbies, yes. And it is something I'm rekindling and I'm putting it on my calendar. In fact, you mentioned it, that I'm actually pre-scheduling my cycling because I can always find things that get in the way of it. The other hobby is my YouTube channel and the podcast to an extent. I'm really getting into video and doing B-roll and trying to make it interesting. So go check that out at our YouTube channel. That'd be good. Nicole, what is your hobby? Uh, laundry. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I have small kids, so it seems like I do it a lot. I would say reading is probably my biggest hobby. Like, I feel like I can't, I need that time every day to just let my brain go somewhere else. So you don't have a hobby? Well, I guess you're so active during the day with kids that that's just your peaceful time. Right. Like an active hobby. I mean, I exercise. I love to cook. That's um, a good hobby. Because that takes a lot. There's a lot of responsibility of making sure you don't burn it and getting the ingredients right. And there's creativity <laughs> there too, right? I'm not saying you burn things. Yeah, at the end, there's a finished product. So that's good. <laughs> or bad. All right. So I think as you're going to have all this free time when you retire, and we've talked about this a lot, you don't have to do pre-retirement and have purpose in that way. It could be that you start cultivating or rekindling hobbies that are going to give you some kind of purpose in your life. And I think that's going to make you happier. Let's go set a smart sprint. On your marks, get set. All right, in the smart sprint segment, we are off to set a seven-day goal to take a little baby step to create a great life. Now, we could do two things. My first idea of a smart sprint, Nicole, was to, hey, identify your hobby and put it on the schedule for an hour a week. That's a good smart sprint, right? Right. Another smart sprint could be is, this is a lot less exciting, by the way, is to go check out one of the social security calculators and to download that detailed one, I think, from the Social Security Administration. And if you're planning on retiring early, enter your earnings, putting the zeros in for those years that you might miss to see the impact. 
So I'll let you choose. Exciting or <laughs> nerdy? All up to you. All right. Next week, we have Devin Carroll from Social Security Intelligence on to talk with me about Social Security strategies to conclude this first iteration of maximizing your Social Security in July. Now in August, Nicole, what's the theme? Listener questions. That's right. We've got quite a backlog. (laughs) There is no theme except we're going to focus on answering your questions. And first, I want to apologize because we have been behind because we've gotten so many and it's been a busy summer. It's been a really busy summer. So if you have questions, I would suggest go to rogerwhitney.com, click on ask a question. And I would love, we've said this before in the show, I would love an audio because this is an auditory format. If you don't leave an audio question and you email the question, the penalty is you'll have to hear Nicole read your question. So... (laughs) You decide. (laughs) See, I can see her when we record this, so she's smiling. I shake my head a lot. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think the world of you. So next month is a smorgasbord, a meatloaf of listener questions, which is going to be fun. All right. Talk to you next week. Have a great day. We appreciate you joining us today for this episode of Retirement Answer Man. Be sure to visit rogerwhitney.com slash answers to access the Retirement Answer Library with over 30 checklists to help you make the most of the only life you have. Remember, you have more power than you realize to create an amazing life starting today with Retirement Answer Man. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance reference is historical and no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Have a wonderful day.